North America and Asia are home to some very hardy animals, and they are also home to some of the largest predators on this planet. The ecosystems of North America and Asia are both very competitive, and I'm sure many North American species would be able to survive in Asia, and many Asian species would be able to survive in North America. In today's video, I will be focusing on the second scenario. I will be going through three Asian animals that I believe could survive in North America. To find our first species, we can head to South and Southeast Asia. As we will be taking a look at the fishing cat. The fishing cat is a medium sized wild cat, and it tends to be found around wetlands, rivers, and swamps. This cat is perfectly adapted to these habitats, and they live a mostly semi aquatic lifestyle. Fishing cats have webbing between their toes, and this adaptation both helps them to swim and helps them to walk across muddy wetlands. They have stocky, powerful bodies and short tails, and like most other wild cats, they are known for being elusive. The fishing cat is in a genus with a few other Asian wild cats, but it is the largest member of this genus. They can reach a maximum weight of around 17 kilograms, and they put this size to good use. The fishing cat is a very hardy and adaptable species, and it'll feed on pretty much anything in its ecosystem. The majority of their diet is made up of small mammals and fish, but they will feed on snakes, amphibians, insects, and even carrion. You'd think that this adaptability would make them a relatively successful animal, but unfortunately, today, the fishing cat is listed as vulnerable. The reasons behind this cat's decline are mostly human-related, as they are threatened by the destruction of wetlands, polluted rivers, and human-wildlife conflict. Even though fishing cats do not target conventional livestock, they do target fish in aquaculture ponds. This often leads to people poisoning these cats, and some fishermen take them out as they are viewed as competition. The over-exploitation of local fish stocks is also a factor, and today there are only an estimated 10,000 individuals left in the wild. Even though these animals may be struggling across their native range, I do believe that they could do well in one North American ecosystem. The Everglades is one of the most iconic natural regions in North America, and it's a place that I believe the fishing cat would thrive. There are plenty of wetlands divided up by forests, and in these areas, there are plenty of prey for the fishing cat to feed on. It could easily feed on many of the native fish, and it would also be great at taking out some invasive species too. Yes, the fishing cat would have to look out for predators, but it's very good at doing this in its native ecosystem. For our next species, we will be heading over to the Indian subcontinent. As our next animal is the sloth bear. The sloth bear is one of the most distinctive bear species in the world, and it's an animal that's often underestimated. Like most other bears, the sloth bear is omnivorous, and most of its diet is made up of fruits, ants, and termites. They have a few adaptations that help them to feed on these animals, such as missing incisors and large droopy lips. These lips are the reason why it has the nickname libated bear, but these lips help them to suck up insects. The sloth bear is a very hardy species, and it's known for being one of the most aggressive bears in the world. It's believed that they are so aggressive because they live in such a competitive ecosystem, and on a daily basis, they have to deal with many dangerous animals. It has relatively large canine teeth to defend itself, and these come in handy when it encounters leopards and tigers. Tigers will occasionally prey on sloth bears, but these animals don't give in without a fight. When these tigers choose to hunt these bears, they will usually wait by termite mounds, and then they will try to creep up on the bears without them noticing. Of course, this doesn't always work, 
and there have been a few reported cases where sloth bears have killed tigers. This is why tigers usually give them a wide berth, and these animals are known to be extremely aggressive towards humans too. Despite their hardiness and ferociousness, the sloth bears are currently listed as vulnerable. Once again, the reason behind their declines is mostly human-related, as a lot of their natural habitat has been cut down for timber, agriculture, and development. These animals are also poached for their gallbladders, as they are used in traditional Chinese medicine. This is one of the main reasons why there are only an estimated 20,000 of these bears left in the wild. But once again, I believe that they could do well in North America. Once again, you'll have to let me know what you think in the comments down below. But the one thing that is for certain is that the sloth bear is a very aggressive species. To find our final species, we can head over to China and Mongolia. As our final species is the wild Bactrian camel. There are two species of Bactrian camel alive today, the domestic Bactrian camel and the wild Bactrian camel. These two species are closely related, and at one point in time, Wild Bactrian camels were thought to have descended from domestic Bactrian camels. Genetic studies have established that they are separate species, and the wild Bactrian camel diverged from the domestic Bactrian camel around 1.1 million years ago. There are around 2 million domesticated Bactrian camels alive today, but there are only around a thousand wild Bactrian camels. The wild camels are currently listed as critically endangered, and they are currently threatened by poaching and climate change. At least 50 of these animals are poached every year across Mongolia and China, and they are killed in extremely brutal and cowardly ways. Hunters will leave landmines at watering holes, and when the camels come to drink, they are killed. This is a very disgusting and cowardly way to kill an animal, and it endangers any other animal that visits the watering hole. Even though these animals are struggling today, they are extremely hardy and they are perfectly adapted to desert ecosystems. They can go for months without water, and they can even drink salt water without adverse effects. They are able to feed on almost all desert vegetation. And this is why I believe that they would be able to do well in the deserts of North America.